Amen, church. Happy Easter. Will you stand with us? He is not here. He is risen. Let's just worship our God today. What a great day to serve our God. Let's sing this song. The life you gave, your body was broken, your love poured out. You bled and died for me there on the cross. You breathed your last as you were crucified. You gave it all for me. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Hallelujah, what a friend. Hallelujah, King forever. We thank you for the Crown sealed in the darkness, life is laid. The frame of the Father, Son, in agony, He washes on the Son and be sacrificed. He gave it all for me. Hallelujah. What a out but on that day what seemed like the darkest hour of violent hope broke through and shook the ground and as you rose all the light of all the world was magnified as you rose in victory Hallelujah, it is finished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, it is done. Oh, King forever. Hallelujah, King forever. And we thank you for the cross. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. cross. Amen. Come on, aren't you thankful for what Jesus did on the cross? Come on, put your hands together. Here we go. On a hill for sinners. Come on, church. His body broken. A king forsaken as he hung on that cross. The veil shaken they mourned the Savior but it wasn't for long come on here we go oh he lives he's risen from the grave victorious our Savior reigns oh yes he reigns he rose the soul
silence. That's good. It wasn't over. Oh, our Redeemer was getting ready to rise. And on that morning, they came to find him. The tomb was empty. Yes. Was he in a Let's sing this part. Jesus Christ crucified through his death. There is life by the blood of the Lamb. We have been forgiven. Our death has been paid. Amen. There is grace upon grace. Only one name that saves. And his name. Ash was 
redeemed, only beauty remains. My open heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new now. Life begins with you. It's your rest.
At dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. And there was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. And his appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. And the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. And the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Amen. Thank you, Devante. Can we give him a thanks again? Uh, Good morning, church. Uh, At this time, children are released to go to Children's Church. We have an incredible team of volunteers excited to teach you this morning about Jesus. There's a resurrected Jesus, so go have an incredible time. 
Uh, this church, this morning church, we celebrate the fact that not only did Jesus die, but he also rose from the grave. Come on, amen, church? Come on, amen, church? Christ is risen. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, Christ is risen. Yeah. I mean, we need to celebrate him this morning. We need to lift him up. Uh, you, you see, I believe that when you and I grow, just like that song mentioned that Devante danced to, if we grow to understand the significance of the resurrection that we will enter into a, 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 a fresher and even more powerful relationship with God than what we've ever had before. See, that's why the Apostle Paul showed that he had a hunger to know the power of the resurrection. See, have you ever been hungry before? Oh, come on, have you ever been hungry before? I've been hungry, right? I, I know you have. You can't wait even today to get up and on out of here and eat some ham, right? And some mashed potatoes or some mac and cheese, right? And then you're going to chase it down with some peanut butter pie or banana pudding. If you weren't hungry before, now that I've mentioned all that good food you are now. But see, listen, the, the Apostle Paul was hungry. But it wasn't for food. He described this hunger when he said this. And this is really powerful. He said in Philippians 3.10, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection. See, it's like a boy who meets a girl that mesmerizes her with her beauty, him with, his, with her beauty. And he thinks, you know what, I need to get to know her. I mean, I, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna know her from a distance. I wanna know her up close. I didn't wanna know my wife Amy from a distance. I wanted to know her up close and personal. See, it's not enough to see her at a distance. I wanna get to know this girl with the cute smile and the bubbly personality. Are you hungry? See, Paul is hungry to know Christ, but he says he's especially hungry to know the power of his resurrection. Because he realizes that the resurrection carries with it some special power. That you and I, if we can grab a hold of this and really get it, it will bring power into our lives that we've never had before. How many of you want this power that this knowledge of the resurrection brings? You see, Paul knew that Jesus had been crucified. But when he came to realize that Jesus was resurrected, that's when everything changed. See, when we understand the resurrection, it changes everything, church. We can realize all day long that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, but coming to know the resurrected Christ who lives in us and walks and talks with us is what really changes us. See, today it's my hope that you, through this message that that we're all reminded that we serve a risen Lord who walks and talks with us, and that even some of you today make the resurrected Christ Lord of your life. See, so take a look, for example, at what happened after Jesus had been crucified on the cross. This is what happens three days later. In Matthew 28, we read part of it. Matthew 28 says, After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. And there was a violent earthquake, for the angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. And his appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. And the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. And the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. Now, my friends, let me stop right there for a moment and say there are a lot of people, maybe even some who are here today, who are looking for Jesus who was crucified. See, they seek out the crucified Jesus. They, they're focused on the Jesus of the crucifix. But look at what the angel says to them next. In verse 6, he is not here. He has risen just as he said. He says, the crucified Jesus isn't here. 
There's another Jesus that you need to know, that you need to learn to relate to. This crucified Jesus that you came to see is risen from the dead. Are you going to look for crucified Jesus or for resurrected Jesus? Because whichever one that you look for is going to leave you in a completely different place. See, and the angel says to the, to the women, come and see the place where he lay. Come and see that this crucified Jesus that you seek is no longer here. He's not laying in the grave any longer. He did his grave time. Three days worth, showing that he was really dead. Letting the shock of it all sink in as deep as it can. Three days of agony. Three days of despair. Three days feeling like all was lost. Come and see where he lay. Because you're about to have your mind blown. Come and see that he's not here any longer. Why? Because he's alive just as he said. You saw the crucified Jesus. This one who had the thorn of thorns of, of crowns pressed down on his brow. They had the flesh ripped off from his bones. They had the spikes driven into his feet and his hands. This one that gasped for breath and said, Father, forgive them. And then whispered, Father, into, my hand, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And then he drew his last breath. Yes, you have etched in your mind the crucified Jesus. But the crucified Jesus isn't the one that you need to see. You need to have an experience with the resurrected Jesus. See, and then the angel continues and says this in verse 7, Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee, and there you will see him. You see, the angel says, once you've had an experience with the resurrected Jesus, go quickly, run, and tell the others that Jesus is risen and that he wants to meet them too. Church, did you know the resurrected Jesus wants to meet with you too? See, he keeps going ahead of you so you might see him. But here's the thing, our eyes are so fixed on the problems of life. Right? The shiny things of this world, the voices that scream out for our attention. But the resurrected Jesus keeps trying to get your attention. And it's kind of like when my grandbabies come over to my house. They love to play hide and seek. They wear Papa out. But they love to play hide and seek, and, and so they'll count. And I'll go hide. And we kind of take turns doing, you know, I count, they hide. They'll count, I hide. And, uh, but here's the thing. When they count and I hide, I'm not trying to stay hidden. I want them to find me. See, it's not fun if I hide so well that they search and search and search and never find me. Right? Or they get bored and go do something else while I'm waiting in the closet for them. Instead, what happens in our house when we play hide-and-seek and they're counting and I go hide and they'll finally you know, get to 20 and they say, ready or not, here I come and I'll sit there for just a few seconds and then I'll give Papa's fashionable call, Ca -ca! Ca -ca! and I'll hear him, hear him scurrying around and say, Hi, where is he? And they'll come and they'll find, and they'll find me. And they'll come and open up the closet door where I'm at. And I'm like, woo! And they'll be like, ha ha ha. And they love it. Friend, God, friends, God goes in front of you and hides in plain sight so we can find him. And when we find him, wow, it's amazing. 
In verse 8, it says, So the women hurried away from the tomb afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. And suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. And they came to him, and they clasped his feet, and they worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. And you know what's amazing? They clasped his feet, and they worshipped him. When you have an experience with a resurrected Jesus, you worship. How do I know if somebody's had an experience with the resurrected Jesus? Let me tell you, they worship. They worship. It doesn't matter if it's hymns or it's modern day, modern day music. Because they've had a resur- an experience with the resurrected Jesus. I'll tell you, I can stand in the middle of a church that's singing hymns and my heart will be set on fire for Jesus because I've had an experience with the resurrected Christ. Or I could sit in the middle of a church that's singing modern music and they're singing about Jesus and I can worship because I've had an experience with the resurrected Jesus. That's how I know when a person has had truly an encounter with the resurrected Christ. They worship. They don't worry about the people around them. They don't worry about what style it is. Their hearts are set on fire for Jesus because we're lifting him up. And he says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself. So what happens is is these women, they worship him, they clasp his feet, and then they get up and they run to tell the others of their experience with the resurrected Jesus. Let me tell you, friends, I believe that this is such a good picture of the church today. There are some who only relate with the crucified Jesus. They have a head knowledge that Jesus was crucified. Their relationship is with Jesus, with a Jesus that lived and died for them, but they have yet to discover that they are actually invited to have a personal relationship with the living, resurrected Jesus. See, theirs is a relationship with Christ that I would describe as almost, but not yet. They almost have it, but not quite yet. See, it's partially understood, but not fully developed. See, they understand John 3, 16. It says, for God so loved the world that that he gave his only son that whoever, whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. They understand that. They understand that Jesus' death is what makes a way for them to be forgiven. That like it says in 1 Peter 2.24, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds we've been healed. They understand that. They understand that there was a legal transaction, his payment for our pardon. Praise God. Right? They get that. They get that reality. And while that's true, church, this is so important for us. And while that's true and amazing in and of itself, it doesn't end there. That's the beginning. The angel said to the women that morning, go and tell the disciples to prepare to meet the resurrected Jesus because he's going ahead of you and will meet you in Galilee. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the excitement and the absolute terror that they must have had? They hadn't met the resurrected Jesus yet. I think that there are a lot of people in the church across the nation. There are a lot of people in the church who go into church and they sit in the chairs and they'll sing some songs and they got a head knowledge, but they've not yet met the resurrected Jesus. Many who would say, even say that they're Christians, but they live, listen, they live between Jerusalem and Galilee. They've met the crucified Jesus, and now it's time to meet the resurrected Jesus. How about you? How about you? Which which Jesus have you met? See, look at the difference between the two. See, the followers of Jesus who had only met the crucified Jesus, He had become their savior, listen, but they were still down in the clouds. Right? He was savior. He had secured their forgiveness. He was savior, but they were still scattered. He was savior, but they were still somber. Think about it. He was savior, but they were stuck. 
Does that sound familiar? Sound like many who are part of the church or many who say that they're Christ followers today? But look at the difference meeting the resurrected Christ meant for those women in that day. See, after they had met the risen Jesus, they were up and running. After they met the risen Jesus, they were rejoicing. After they met the risen Jesus, their hope was renewed. See, it's amazing, isn't it? See, that a person can be a follower and fix their eyes and their hearts on the crucifixion, but still be scattered, still be somber, and re remain stuck. It's all a matter of perspective. See, and the question I ask is, is which side are you on? Which side are you on? I see some are still over here. See, some are still over here. He's, he's Savior, but they're, but they're scattered. See, some are still over here in this category. He's Savior, but they're still somber. He's Savior, but they're still stuck. Come on, does that sound familiar? See, some people, that's where they're at. They get it here. Jesus was crucified for them. They believe it, but they're still, listen, they're still stuck. They're still somber. They're still going through life, and life is just pummeling them and is dragging them down. They've got an intellectual assent that Jesus died, and they go to church, and they nod their head in approval of like, yeah, I'm glad that Jesus died so that I could be forgiven, but they still seem to get stuck. They still seem to be scattered and somber, and they go throughout life trying to figure out, okay, what, what isn't there something more? Or there's another group of people who are kind of, who live over here, and they've met the resurrection resurrected Lord, right? And they've met him and they realize that they've met the resurrected Lord and now they're off and they're running. They're running a new race. They've met the resurrected Lord and they have a renewed hope in their heart and their life. They've met the resurrected Lord and it seems like no matter what happens to them, they still can rejoice. You see the difference? And the church is always filled up with these two different categories of people. And if we aren't careful, we can think that this is what Christianity is all about. The fact that Jesus secured our forgiveness, the fact that Jesus died on the cross. And yes, that's a part of it, but listen, friends, it is so much more. The question is, is which side are you on? It's clear in your life. And it just takes a little bit of honesty to say, oh, I'm here. I've really met the resurrected Lord and I'm running a new race and it's amazing. I'm rejoicing in my heart and I'm rejoicing in Him and I have a renewed hope in my life. Or we're over here in this place where you know what, you get it. Yeah, He's Savior. Yeah, He died for you. But it just seems like, you know what, I'm still always somber. I still am always struggling with my emotions and my depression. All of these things, I'm still weighed down with the cares of life. I'm over here and I'm, I'm still kind of scattered from the body of Christ, really not ever finding my place where I fit in. And I'm just kind of standing on the outside. I walk into the room of the church, but I still feel alone. And they're scattered and they're somber. Yes, he's Savior. Yes, he died on the cross. And we nod and we walk out. And yet there's this other group that they get it because they've actually met the resurrected Lord Jesus. They've met him. And now they go through life rejoicing because he is alive. They go through life renewed in their hope and they've got an eye and a, and a vision for their future because they've met the resurrected Lord Jesus. Let me tell you friends, there's, there's a world of difference between the two. A world of difference. And some of you here right now, you're like holy cow, I'm over here. I'm over here. I go to church. I'll throw my offering in. Which, by the way, they forgot to mention. Get back to the Lord today. But they'll go to church. And they'll throw their offering in. But there's still something missing. Listen, if that's you, i got good news. Jesus wants you to invite you to the side. 
See, the person who meets the resurrected Jesus finds themselves running their race, a new race. Not the old race. They're running a new race. And they recognize, they realize, wow, I met Jesus and now he's called me to run a completely different race. Using their gifts for God, for his glory. That's a new race. Running their race. Where they get up and they realize that I live and I move and I have my being in him. They run a new race. They're not running their old race. And there are a lot of people coming to church and they go to church and they sit in church and they understand that the crucified Christ, he, ra- he died for them, but they're still running their old race. God's got something new for you. He's got a new race for you to run that your life means something different than just out for you and out to survive. That is something where he has a purpose for you for your existence. See, those people who have experienced the resurrected Christ, they have in their heart this rejoicing that always happens because joy is not not contingent on circumstances. Happiness is. Happiness is over here. Well, I get it. Jesus died for me. But we still constantly seem to, because of circumstances in life, we are knocked off. Our ability to rejoice. We don't have joy in our heart because we're not walking hand in hand close with the risen Savior. And so if you see that in your life, it's going up and down, up and down, up and down. So you're invited to come over here on this side to meet the resurrected Lord. To have your hope renewed. See, they're living with a renewed hope because they walk with Jesus. Even in the midst of trials and tribulations, their hope is renewed. Like the song in the garden, my mom, my, one of my mom's favorite songs. In the garden. And, she, and he walks with me. And he talks with me. If you know it, sing it. And he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there is none other. I've ever known. See, that's why Paul was able to say in the midst of real struggle, he says, therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. See, what's the difference? When you meet the resurrected Jesus, you realize that He really is, listen church, He really is alive. And He is Lord. See, He's Lord. When you meet the resurrected Jesus, you realize, wow, He's Lord over the grave. He conquered the grave. You realize He's Lord even over death itself. Death can come knocking on the door, but guess what? You're not thrown back by it. Why? Because He's Lord. You recognize when you walk with the resurrected Savior that He's Lord over death. He's Lord over the grave. Listen, He's Lord over anything that seeks to imprison you. Your emotions, your thoughts, your financial troubles, your relational strife. He is Lord and He is alive and He is with you and He's walking with you. He experienced the resurrected Jesus, and you will find yourself running a new race that's marked out for you. Experience the resurrected Jesus, and you will rejoice because you will find him walking with you. Experience the resurrected Jesus, and you will have your hope renewed because you will know that there is nothing that is more powerful than God. See, that's why the Apostle Paul makes it very clear that the call to salvation is a call to not just place your faith in the God who died for you, but the God who wants to live in you and lead you. He wants to be more than just the one who died for you, but the one who actively leads you as Lord. See, Romans says it this way. The same Paul who met the resurrected Christ on the Damascus Road, he wrote it this way. He says, he says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see how closely he connects this with 
with believing that Jesus died and that he rose from the grave. There's power in the resurrection. Listen, church, we've got to grow in our understanding even of what salvation is. He says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. It's more than just praying to get a ticket into heaven. It's more than just fire insurance, making sure you don't go to hell. It's way more than that. It's calling on him. Yes, he was crucified. Yes, he died on the cross for your sins. Which is truly amazing. But the call of salvation is a call to declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. He is Lord over death. He is Lord over the grave. He is Lord over my circumstances. He is Lord over my relationships. He is Lord over my body. He is Lord over my money. He is Lord over all. Is he really your Lord? Come on now, ask the question. Is he really your Lord? Or have you just asked for forgiveness? See, and I can say this. He, he, he says, if you pray this, he says, I can say this because I believe that God raised him from the dead. He's Lord because God raised him from the dead. He's the resurrected Jesus, and it's the resurrected Jesus that I serve. Listen, it's the resurrected Jesus that I serve, not just the Jesus that died on the cross. See, Christ's death on the cross made him Savior. But rising from the dead shows that he is alive and that he is Lord. Maybe today you find yourself here and you know all about the crucified Jesus. And you could tell the story of his crucifixion detail by detail. But you've come to realize, I need an encounter with the resurrected Jesus. I need to meet him. Friends, let me tell you, he's waiting for you today. You can meet him today. Right now. Because he's here to meet with you. How can you do this? Come to the altar and meet with him. He's here. Come and pray. Come and pray and fall at His feet and worship Him. Ask Him to be Lord. Say, Jesus, You are Lord. You are Lord over death. You're Lord over the grave. And today, I declare You as Lord over my life. You are alive, and I need You in my life. I don't just need forgiveness. I don't just need a ticket out of hell and a ticket into heaven. I need You in my life. I need You to be my Lord. Come on, and when you say that, listen, I, it, this is not just semantics. This truly is having, a, ha, having a, an experience with the resurrected Jesus. When we, that's why he says, those who call on him and say, Lord, Lord, I need you. And they meet with him. Let me tell you, he'll meet you. He'll meet you. Ask him to be your Lord. I want to know the power of your resurrection. Say, help me to know you, Jesus. Meet me here. And while you're up here praying, ask Him to lead you on the path ahead. Say, I believe in my heart, Jesus, that you died and God the Father raised Him from the dead. Jesus, I believe you are alive and want to walk with me and ahead of me. So I ask you to walk with me and to lead me, to meet me here and then to walk with me out of here. I ask you to walk with me, to lead me. I will follow you. Lead me on the path going forward. Walk with me on this road that is ahead of me. Help me to know that I'm not alone. That's what the resurrected Christ wants. That's what the angel was saying to the women. Listen, you're looking for the crucified Jesus, but he's not here. He's risen. He's risen. Now go and tell the other disciples, get on on to Galilee because he wants to meet him there. And I would say this, He wants to meet you. He wants to meet you. There's some that you're here. You're here and you know it. You're here and you know it. 
And you're like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to take that next step. I'm afraid what other people are going to think. I've been in the church forever. Listen, that, it, listen, you can't worry about what other people are thinking. This is a moment when you get to meet the resurrected Christ. And you get to make a choice at this moment. Do I live over here stuck and scattered and somber and up and down? Or do I move over here to where I say I'm really coming forward and I'm going to grab a hold of the risen Lord and I'm asking Him to meet me here alive in my life and I'm declaring Him as Lord of my life because I need Him. And I'm declaring Him Lord and I'm asking Jesus to meet me here and then to walk out of here with me, leading me. So which is it? If that's you, come on forward and just let's have a moment of prayer where you would just say, you know what? It's time for me. I, I met him. I met him. At an altar of prayer. And I declared, Jesus, you're Lord, and I need you. You're alive. And I want to meet with you, and I need you in my life. I need you to be Lord of my life. Lord of every area of my life. And Jesus, I, I need you to lead me. Meet me on the road ahead. Lead me in the path that I'm to go. Help it to be more than just me understanding the crucifixion. Help it to be that I have a real personal relationship with you. Where I walk with you and I talk with you and I, and, and I know the sweet communion of being close with God and God being with me. Listen, He'll do that. Maybe for some, it's, it's like, okay, I have this renewed reality of, wow, now I'm walking with the resurrected Lord. And maybe there's some here today, it's like, you know what? I really need to meet Christ in a, in a personal way. I need to meet Him in a personal way. And would you bow your heads with me for a moment? Lord Jesus, we thank You for for dying on the cross, we thank you for the empty grave. But Lord, we also realize that there's more to this Christianity thing than just knowing than just knowing that you died on the cross. But that you want to be Lord of my life, that you want to meet personally. As I declare, Jesus, I, I want you to be Lord. I want you to come into my life and lead my life. Lead me from this place, place forward. May the resurrection truly change my reality. Where from this day forward, you will be my Lord, my Savior, and my Lord. And I wa will walk with you from this day forward. And I will ask you to lead me from this day forward. Lead me on the path that I'm to walk. Lead me. Walk with me. Hand in hand. Yes, I need forgiveness. I need forgiveness of my sin. I thank you, Jesus, that you, you made the way for me to be forgiven. But you've also made the way for me to have real life with God. Life with the resurrected Jesus. I'm not going to belabor it. If, if, if you recognize you're over here in this area, in this group, and, and you recognize this crucifixion, but you've really, really never had an experience with the resurrected Lord coming into your life, you declaring, you, I need you to be the Lord of my life. I need you to lead me. I want you to walk with me every day. I just want to ask you right now, just slip out of your seat. Come on up. Just kneel here. Make this an altar of prayer. And let's just pray. And declare him as Lord. Want to do that? Anybody? Who will meet me up here? Who will meet me up here? Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Today's the day. Move from this place. Come on. Move from this place over to this place. The resurrected Jesus. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. He's waiting. The resurrected Jesus who says, come and see me. Come and meet with me. Come and know that I am Lord. I'm Lord. I'm Lord. It's more than just your intellectual assent. It's more than just, quote unquote, belief. It's, 
It's Jesus, come into my life. Start, I want a personal relationship with you. I want to walk with you. And for those who have come forward, just pray that prayer. Say, Jesus, Jesus, you are Lord. You're Lord over death. You're Lord over the grave. And I need you right now in my life. Say that to him, Lord, I need you in my life. Jesus, come into my life. Resurrected Jesus, come into my life. Lead me on the path ahead. Would you walk with me? Thank you for paying for my sins on the cross and wanting to walk with me in a personal relationship. And so right now, Lord Jesus, I surrender all. Would you meet me here? Thank you, Jesus. Just surround them right now. Wrap your arms around them. You're the resurrected Jesus. You're alive. You're not in the grave. You're here right now. Help them to know that not only are their sins forgiven. Have you asked them to forgive your sins? Just ask them. Say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Thank you for making the way possible for me to have forgiveness of my sins. But now take it further. Say, Jesus, I want you in my life. I want to give you all of my life. I want to surrender to your Lordship. Come on, say it to him. Jesus, you're my Lord. Jesus, you're my Lord, which means I want you to walk with me. Walk with me today. Walk with me later on when I walk out of these doors. Help me to know. Put your spirit around me. Help me to know that I am not alone. Walk with me as I go back into my car and as I turn it on and I drive down the road. Would you help me to just know that you're right there with me? And I'm driving down the road and when I go have lunch, help me as I sit down in the seat to know you're right there next to me. You're mine and I'm yours. And I'm going to walk with you. Tell him, say, I'm going to walk with you, Jesus. I want you to show up. Show up in my life. Show up tonight when I go and lay down in bed. Help me just to know. You're right here with me. You're right here with me. And when i got troubles, when I've got problems come, Jesus, because you're right there with me, I'm just going to, I'm going to hand them right off to you. I'm going to say, Jesus, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think about this? Jesus, how do you want me to feel about this? Jesus, and you're going to turn to him and say, Lord, here's my problems. Here's my troubles. I got some financial stuff going on. Jesus, what do you think? I'm giving you my burdens. I'm giving you my cares. And what's going to happen is you're not going to be scattered anymore. You're not going to be somber anymore. You're going to have renewed hope. Say to him, say, Lord, would you renew my hope? Would you help me to rejoice in you and your presence? Oh, God, help me to walk with you. I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, this morning that you have reminded us as a church You've reminded us as individuals, Lord, that it's not just about your crucifixion, but that you are alive. You are alive, and we declare it here in this place. We believe that Jesus is alive. We believe that Jesus is Lord, and we declare him as Lord over our lives. Come on, church, everybody out here, we're not spectators, we're participators. Lord, we, you are Lord of my life. And I want to walk with you. I want to talk with you. I want you to lead me. I want you to lead me. And I I just pray, Lord, renew my hope every day. Renew my hope every day because I serve a risen Savior. I don't serve a Savior who's in the grave. There's a reason you are resurrected and you showed us that you are Lord over it all. So, Lord, we just pray that as we walk out of this place, we walk out with a renewed reality, a renewed sense of appreciation for the resurrection. Oh, thank you, Lord, you are resurrected. Thank you, Lord, you are alive. You're you're my constant companion as I go through life. You're going to keep me safe. You're going you're gonna to walk me through every situation. Come on, can you tell them that? Say, oh, Lord, right here I am, your Lord. I declare it today. I believe, Jesus, you rose from the dead. And I believe you're Lord of my life. And I declare it. And Lord, by that, you tell me that I'm saved. I'm saved from depression. I'm saved from all of those struggles. I'm saved from being somber. I'm saved from being scattered. I'm saved from being stuck. I'm saved from my sins. And I'm saved for the future. Lord, I thank you for it. Can you thank him for it? Come on, church. Can you thank him for it? Thank you, Lord. You are Lord. We declare that here today in this place. Resurrected Jesus, you are Lord. You're Lord of our lives. And we lay it all down. And Lord, I pray that as those who have come to this altar of prayer, when they walk up, Lord, I pray that every burden that they have just be laid down on the the ground. They'll be laid down at the feet of their Lord. That Lord, and not only that, they'll feel you even right now. God, we're not asking for emotionalism, but Lord, You are Lord of our emotions. God, I pray that even now, 
And you come up and you give peace. I pray peace in the name of Jesus. I pray peace over each one who's come forward to say, I want Him to be Lord. I want you to walk with me. I pray peace in the name of Jesus right now into their life. Holy Spirit, bring them peace in their hearts. May the burdens be lifted at Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church. Can you say amen? Amen. Why don't we all stand together and we're going to sing one last song as we leave this place today. Leave your burdens. Walk with Jesus. He's the resurrected Lord. Come on. Let's sing this together. Washes over me. You have made me new. Now life begins. Come on, does life begin with him or what? Come on, sing it. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. Come on, are we free? resurrection. Thank you, Lord. We are free. We are free. Come on. Say it. I'm free. I'm free in Jesus. Thank you, O oh Lord, because you walk with me. I can face tomorrow. Because you walk with me, I can face what I face today. Because you walk with me. You are Lord. You are Lord, and I'm free. I'm free all, from all the cares and the burdens, and help me, Lord, to not, to, to not forget your lordship in my life. Help me to not forget your lordship over the grave. Help me to not forget your lordship over death. Help me to not forget, God, that you're leading me. Come on, can you say that? Help me to not forget. Help me to not forget that you're, you're going to meet me out there tomorrow. You're going to meet me in Galilee. You're going to meet me in the place. You're going to meet me in my workplace. You're going to meet me in my home. Come on, can you tell him that? You're going to meet me, Lord, and I'm going to be free. I'm going to live free. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, thank you, resurrected Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. Amen, come on. Now this is what I'd like you to do. Now in all that freedom that you have, you don't have to worry about, you know, like shaking hands and things like that. So turn around and listen, greet some brothers and sisters in Christ because we are free, right? Brothers and sisters in Christ, the family of God, turn around. Greet about a thousand people before you leave today. God bless you. You are dismissed.